Hello. I literally feel like I have to restrain my breath because York. <laughs> I'm recovering from the ailments of this weather. It's raining outside. My neighbor is probably up to something. I don't know if you can hear him. It's They're doing the most, but I, I don't know. I hope it doesn't affect the sound. It literally took all I have to be here recording this podcast. So I will ask that you forgive the timing. It's another podcast coming in really late on Monday, but yo, it's not midnight yet. So please, please, please accept, accept this sacrifice that I give unto you. <laughs> but anyway, let's get straight into it. There'll be some water breaks here and there because I'm literally running out of breath. And if you like this voice, cause it's deeper than my usual voice, I don't know if you want me to have a cold all the time. <laughs> but anyway, welcome to another episode of the In All Honesty podcast. My fabulous name is Oliver Rao, and I will remind you that there are partnership opportunities on this podcast. If you are watching on YouTube, you can have product placement. If you are streaming on any other site, you can sponsor an episode or a season. You can have a mention on the podcast or you can run an advertisement on this podcast. I am more than happy to partner with you and I'll also remind you for our prompts on Thursday you check out my social media that is Oliver Rao on Instagram, Facebook and TikTok and I do put out a prompt that then will tell you what we are talking about the next week then you can contribute and if you'd also like to follow the conversations on this particular posts then you can go on my posts on social media that's under the prompt post and you'll find people commenting and just sharing their stories that's out there in the public what I share here is mostly what I receive in my DMs and directly through my prompt. So it's something that you do not see on your end. But let's get straight into it. Last week I asked, what was your first biggest purchase and what lesson did it teach you? And this was inspired by this episode because this is the episode where I'm going to share how I bought my first car story. Um, I had a TikTok where I had a TikTok video where I was traveling to Eldoret and I just showed you the first errand I needed to run was to pick my logbook and a lot of people had a lot of questions and I'll be answering all of them in this episode. But first, I just want to go through some of your purchases and what lessons they've taught you because we are always learning on this podcast. So the first person said, seat. I don't know whether you bought a couch or you bought a seat or was it a hammock? Please let us know so that we have context to this. But I guess that's the most expensive thing you ever bought. Someone else says, a piece of land taught me every cent I spend should be accounted for. Because your kulipa loan see jokes. Ah, a piece of land. That's a dream that we all want. But again, that's a good lesson. That's a good lesson. Every single cent has to be accounted for. And that's also something I learned while buying my car. So I do agree. Uh, someone else says it was my fridge that I bought at 82K. My lesson is that money in the bank is not valuable until you invest. A lot of um, like finance gurus tell us this. They tell us, don't keep your money in the bank, invest it in something. And I will tell you today, and I keep telling people this, I what is it called? Commerce, finance, economics. Those are topics that don't come easy to me. I don't grasp anything in that sphere very easily. So it has to be broken down very much. And most of the times, like I need help from my friends who get them better to explain things to me or to break down things for me, or sometimes to even just manage those accounts for me, because it's not easy for me to know Oh, what to invest in? What? How does this work? And I can read about it. I really read about it. But I'll have to go through different literature, so many literature and probably YouTube videos and TikTok videos for me to understand like one concept. So I know a lot of things in this life, but your economics, money, that's a place I really, really struggle. I <laughs> honestly struggle. And I usually say if I get a little more money, I'll just get an accountant to do these things for me because you're, <laughs> but yeah, I do understand. And congratulations on getting your fridge or oh, piece of land. Congratulations. That's such a huge deal. Someone else says a phone. Proper research is key to getting your money's worth. A phone. 
Ah, let me tell you, some things you think are small. Hmm. Ha, huh, until. If your phone got stolen right now, the amount of stress you will go through because you have to budget for a new phone. And getting like a regular, small, cheaper phone just doesn't cut it. Especially, let's say someone like me. I need my phone to record content. I need my phone to, um, okay, mostly record content and to just like do social media. Most of the time I'm multitasking on my phone. I can't just lose my phone right now and decide, okay. I'll get a 10k phone to shikilia me. No, you have to budget like a good ass phone for you to get back to what you were doing immediately. So I understand how a phone can be quite a huge purchase. And also you've said research to get your money's worth. That is very key. And this should apply in everything that you do. Please research so that at the end of the day, you're getting the best deal at the least price possible. So always research. For me, working um, as my sales job, working for Huawei based at Safari Eldoret, it really helped give me insight into what phones look like. That's when I realized a phone is just a phone, guys. This idea of OCG Samsung, OCG Oppo. Yes, those are brands. Those are names. They're competing in the industry. But at the end of the day, I noticed, um, I, that's where I learned how to look at specs for things. I just look at specs. So if I, if there's certain specs that I wanted that are in a Samsung, but I can find the same specs in an Oppo and an Oppo is going for 30K and a Samsung is going for 50K, trust, trust. I don't care for brands. <laughs> um, someone else says, I bought an apartment for 13 million and dealing with the contractors was insane. I can only imagine how crazy this is. And first of all, congratulations on your apartment. I can only imagine how crazy this was for you. And my only imagination or how close I can come to how you felt about this is that I know how generally people or even men treat women who make like certain purchases. I don't know. They think it's easier to dupe women or it's easier to just mansplain over women. So you'll find it twice as difficult to just deal with contractors. And I saw this when I, when my mom, I think my mom was constructing, she was the one overseeing construction of the house back at home, the country home a while back. And I remember her quarreling with some, I don't know whether it was one of the contractors. She she was just quarreling and she was like, oh, you think you you can steal from me? You think I've never built a house before? You're telling me this is the, um, this is the amount of something. Like, let's say 7,700, but someone's going to tell you 7,200. And they think just because you're a woman, you can't catch up on that. And... In my personal experience, like even just dealing with different people like plumbers and electricians, I've had to call a friend to just chill in the house with me, a male friend, for these people to actually do their work well and not disrespect me in any way. So I can understand how you were dealing with contractors and it must have been horrible. But anyway, I hope it gets better. At the end of the day, it gets better. You will fight with them, but I'm sure at the end of the day, it gets better. And I hope it did. Um, someone else says a Honda Civic 2022 model team Honda Hi. <laughs> lesson. I love it. Wow. She is wild and speed like a lure man. Oh, so you like speed. You like speed. I just love Honda generally. So even my car is Honda and anyone who has a Honda, I am here for you. I am here to celebrate you. And you got a 2022 model that must have dug in your pocket a good one. <laughs> but congratulations. And I'm happy you are enjoying the experience. I love it for you. Someone else says my car. Excuse me. <clears throat> okay. Someone else says my car. Long story, my biggest lesson is I should have stood up for myself more. I don't know what you meant by this. I don't know what your your ex, your specific experience was. But then again, a lady buying a car by herself, yeah, you'll get a lot of push and push over there. So, uh, yeah, again, I don't know if... I know it's so wrong, but just get male company. It's the easiest way to deal with these things. I That's what I did. I carried along a male friend to most of my 
these things that I need to buy that are like a big deal, I carried along a male friend. And you find the transaction is very easy. In fact, the way they address you is quite different from the way you get addressed when your male friends are when your male friend like arrives and business is done very fast. But when you it's just you a girl, it's just a hey, Sijinini, oh you know what? Ugh. Anyway, um I I am glad that that's the lesson you learned. But sometimes we learn on the way. Sometimes these lessons are expensive. You have you have to go through something for you to realize, okay, next time I'll do this. So I hope next time you stand up for yourself better. But at the end of the day, congratulations for your car. Um, someone else says, nothing. A recent graduate who is jobless though. A recent graduate who is jobless, though I am manifesting this Samsung Galaxy S10, which is approximately 40K. I told you phones, eh? Um, which is approximately 40k. If I manage to raise this amount, then it will be the fir my first big purchase. Funny? It is not, I don't know if you mean funny in a good way. It's, it's not funny at all. I think you can. I think you can raise the money. It's very easy to raise money for particular, some, for something specific that your heart really, really desires. And when you're set to save money for that particular thing, it's very easy to raise that money. So I am really wishing you the best. I can't wait. If you get your new Samsung, please, 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 please hit me up and let me know. I will be so happy for you. And I can't wait for you to have your new phone. Uh, someone else says, I had just come out of a relationship last year and I got duped a whole 800k. My savings as a child paying black tax, SACO savings plus dividends. Yo, I never recovered. I've never shared with anyone. I am so sorry. My heart goes out to you. I hope you recover. I'm, I'm sure it will take time. I hope you recover. 800K is a lot of money. It's just 200K shy of a million, bub. I, man, that's so much. I am so sorry. I am extremely, extremely sorry for that experience. And this is really weird because in the next episode, we actually will be talking about um, cons and maybe basically just con stories that you've experienced. And yeah, I saw this and I was just like, okay, it's come early. So if you can give us context in the next episode, then we can share that story as well. And it can also go out as a warning to other people, depending on how you lost that money. But I am so sorry. I hope you recover. And money lost has to be recovered. You wake up a day at a time, take it a day at a time. And you try and make more money. I mean, that's just how life is. I am so, so sorry. Um, someone else says, Curtains and seats. Soon it will be a car. And I am elated, to be honest. I am happy for you as well. Curtains and seats. Let me tell you, there are a number of people who said curtains and seats. Woo! You always think to yourself, I'm going to move into my house. I'm going to get this. I'm going to get that. I, let me tell you, curtains will humble you. And then there's seats. So seats, it depends on which ones you want. But really good ones, ugh, they're going to dent you. They're going to dent you a good one. But I'm really happy for you. You got your curtains. You got your seats. You're now aiming for your car. You go. You go. Keep pushing. Keep pushing. It will come. I love it for you. Um, Someone else says, my Camon 19, I'm guessing this is a techno phone. Let's say usikubali peer pressure ikukimbizi. <laughs> Who was peer pressuring you? Did you buy this phone from peer pressure? I'd like to understand the context. <coughs> Guys, I'm suffering. I would like to understand the context for this. So did you get the phone from your friends having the same phone? I, I, don't, get, I don't get the context, but anyway... You can let me know if you want us to have more details. <laughs> but yes, never do anything out of peer pressure. I am telling you now and forever. Please never do anything out of peer pressure. Take your time, sit by yourself and soul search. Find if this is really something that you want or is this something that you're feeling pressure? You're feeling external pressure to do. 
Okay, uh, someone else says, land with the help of a circle. That's really beautiful. Circles are, circles really come through when you want to buy assets and when you need loans for particular things. So yeah, congratulations on your piece of land. That's really, really beautiful. Um, someone else says, buying a car. My biggest lesson is that I could manage and afford with proper planning. This is the exact lesson I learned when I bought my car. You never know that you have this amount of money until you do it. And then you're like, oh, wait a minute. I have access to that much money. <laughs> so usually you don't see how much money you have until you run through your statements. And then you're like, it's me who has had one million bob pass through my phone, my bank transactions like this the whole year, it can't be. So yeah, I do understand this and congratulations on your car. I am really, really happy for you. Uh, someone else says, a bed on IG. Please don't trust those pictures. Ha! Huh. Let me tell you, online shopping can go either way, very, very well or very, very bad. So I don't know whether your bed was expensive and you didn't get what you ordered for. <coughs> or when you say don't trust those pictures, I, I, I don't know. I'm thinking you probably didn't, the bed didn't come looking like what it looked like online. <laughs> and it was probably an expensive bed because beds are not cheap as well, guys. Let's just agree. Beds are not cheap as well. Um, someone else says not a purchase building two rental apartments. They are still not complete. I now respect landlords. Oh yeah. Once you start going through that journey, you start to respect landlords a whole different way. Um, I know landlords go through a lot, but then there's also, I usually feel like there's also tenants like me who then suffer, um, the same fate as, everyone else when I am a really good tenant I swear I could move out of this house right now and someone would move in without even cleaning this house my houses are usually speak perfect by the time I'm leaving nothing I don't put things on the wall I don't pin walls I don't I do nothing on the walls I leave it exactly as is I don't like stains on the wall I don't touch my walls with dirty hands I don't draw on the walls but usually when I'm moving out I usually get charged for I think paint and cleanly cleaning and that other stuff that's just weird and i'm just like you need to come and inspect the house and decide if you actually need to repaint because i don't think any of my houses need any repaints but anyway yes now you understand landlords better and i would understand that as well but building two apartments is such a huge deal it's not a purchase per se like exchange for money but it's a transaction that involves a lot of money and i'm really happy and happy and happy for you and once you've become a landlord i hope it gets easier i hope you figure out the systems and the structure that you can use to just basically manage your tenants all the same all the very best and i am happy for you and congratulations um someone else says a couch lesson lower expectations with fundies <laughs> <laughs> you got these people to make you a couch character development is not only in relationships <coughs> man i have i need a water break Ooh. i'm struggling mm. okay not a purchase building two rentals no 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 we are a couch lesson lower expectations with its fundies character development is not only in relationships let me tell you one thing. I don't know if your couch was expensive, but if it was, I I personally cannot deal with um what are they called? This handyman. I cannot deal with them. People who make chairs, who make basically I cannot deal with human interaction. These people who you have to do have to make you things from scratch. So what happens is I always buy everything ready made. I will have a budget, I will have the idea of what I want. And then I'll just go shopping for that exact thing. And I will find it ready. 
I do not deal with this. Oh, make it like this, make it like that. I do not deal with that. Take things off Pinterest and take it to someone to make it for you because the literal back and forth, I cannot stand and not from experience. I've just seen other people doing it and I know my patients cannot allow. I cannot allow someone to just stress me out like that when it's their job. And I don't know what's wrong with fundies all over. They just really, they really can't test your patience. So I really do understand. And character development is very real, especially if you're making things. If you're building a house, if you're getting a couch made, <coughs> even if you're getting our, what is it called? Even if you're getting just a cloth tailored, character development is real. And let me tell you, mm, mm, mm. Um, someone else says, fridge, token, sick, ready. So you, <laughs> you did not know the consumption of your fridge before you bought it. So you've bought it and now you're just like this electricity. <laughs> uh, so here's the thing. I don't know if you considered that when you were budgeting for your fridge, there's usually ratings on the fridge. So there's a, if it's rated a plus plus, if it's rated a, B, C, D. So the lower you go on the alphabet, the more the electricity consumption is. So you want to buy a fridge that's right about A, B. Once you get to C, you're starting to get to the high consumption, you know? So the next time you're budgeting for a fridge, please, you might want to consider that. I don't know if a lot of people know that, but there's usually, there's usually ratings on the fridge. So you check that as well. And usually the ones with high, um, uh, what is it called? Power, power consu conservation, power consumption, low power consumption. The ones with low power consumption are usually a bit more expensive. So that's something you want to factor in, in your budget when you're budgeting for say things like fridge or cookers, just appliances that could use electricity. But right now you already have your fridge. So what happens is you just adjust your electricity consumption. If you used to buy 1,000 worth of tokens, now you buy 1,500 worth of tokens. At the end of the day, you have a fridge. We are proud of you. Congratulations. But you'll be fine. Next time when you're buying an appliance, now you know, right? Um, someone else says car. Okay, a car was your most expensive or rather your biggest purchase. Um, someone else says house. Don't rush into anything. I'd really like some more context to this. I'd like a little, like a more expansive story of this. And when you say don't rush into anything, what did what does that mean? Did you buy a house in a rush and then found out things about it? I'll just like to know. So I know you personally. I might get the story from you personally, but <laughs> if you ever see these and you want to share the entire story for us as well, I will. I will also be happy to share it here. But don't rush into anything. That is very true. As we've said earlier, do not rush into anything. Take your time. Do your research. Do your reconnaissance. Just take your fair good time. And if that thing that you're aiming for is sold before you buy it, it really wasn't meant for you. It's okay. Just take your time. Something else will come up. Something better and something more suitable for you. So that was very nice. Thank you. And congratulations on your house. I guess by now you've already figured out how to deal with the things that were not exactly right with that house. You'll be fine. You'll be fine. Congratulations. Someone else says, my laptop, two years after campus, let me tell you, I know how to take care of things I buy for myself. Yes, you have to take care of things you've bought for yourself. As I've mentioned, I think in a previous podcast, is that I, I, I've never had to learn this as a lesson. I take care of everything. If you give me something to keep for you, I will take care of it with all I have. If there's something I've bought, I will take care of it for all I have. And you saying you have your laptop uh, two years after campus, <coughs> I myself never, when I buy something in my head, when I'm doing the research, I'm doing the budgeting, all of that. In my head, when I buy something, it's supposed to last me 10 years. Of course, I'll change it in about two years or so. Who cares? Because I want to but not because it stopped serving me. So that's usually very key for me. Something, anything I'm buying 
must be able to serve me for 10 years at least it could serve for more so taking care of things that you have bought is very is very key but also just learning to take care of everything it doesn't have to be things that you have bought just everything <coughs> because there's a time i used to hire a car not hire cars but yeah i'm the one who was hiring from car dealers yeah i used to hire cars and they used to say a lot of times that oh people when they hire cars they just spoil it because it's not their car and this was a counter argument to me and my friend telling them oh you know this is a car we've hired so we cannot spoil it we have to take care of it it's not our car and they were like you are the complete opposite of other people other people don't care don't take care of things so long as it's not theirs which is very weird i thought when something is not yours you don't take care of it when it's yours you're like ah it's me who'll fix it anyway the damage ends with me the proceeds ends with me i mean whatever happens all the same it's just me who gets hurt but apparently not but buying your own things and buying an expensive thing for yourself then shows you how to really take care of things for yourself and i'm happy for you you and your laptop and i'm happy for the lessons that you have learned um someone else says land using my student finance money no regret but was flat broke for three months i'd like to know your when you say student finance money i don't know what which money that is exactly in kenya is it help um and you bought land with it while you were a student how old were you why were you so forward thinking <laughs> um there is no regret you say but you were flat broke for three months <coughs> It's very common to be extremely broke after you've made a very big purchase. So that's usually very normal. But usually in those months that you're really broke, you feed off the energy of I'm proud I'm proud of myself. So you can even go to bed and you're just like, "Ah, I know I've not eaten, but I have a piece of land. So I'm a, I'm a slumber right here, you know?" Yeah. So congratulations on you and your piece of land. I am so happy for you. And yes, I guess you recovered three months after the fourth month, the money started to come in stable. You were fine. Uh, someone else says, where me, I'm still saving for a couch. The specific one I want is 80 K. It will be my biggest purchase so far. Um, you want a couch worth 80 K. What couch is this? Is it a recliner? I'd like to know, but anyway, yes. All the best, all the best, all the best. You will get that. Um, you will get that couch. I feel like when you set to get something and you start saving towards it, you'll be with it in in a in a very short while. Unless something else happens and you need and your money needs to uh, be channeled somewhere else, you will be fine. Uh, someone else says, "I am here to take notes. We are happy to have you here." Yes. And I think someone who listens to this podcast before they've made their biggest patches will have so much insight and probably they'll make way less mistakes than the rest of us. <laughs> so you are most welcome, love. Uh, someone else says, I've not gotten anything big yet, but I started saving for my first car yesterday. I put 5k aside, Jana. It will be 5k per month till I get more income and I know it will take time, but I am proud of myself. That is very, very beautiful and very intentional. And I am happy that you have started, that you put 5k aside yesterday and you are working towards it. And as I have mentioned in the previous responses is that if you set your heart to get something and you start saving intentionally towards it, it will be a very short time before you get that thing that you are you are really desiring so all the best i am sure you will get that car please once you get that car share with us so that we can celebrate with you okay <laughs> um someone else says uh skincare i have skincare worth more than oh skincare i have skincare worth more than 40k worth every penny mattress 46k sleep is important and wigs are investments oh i loved this <laughs> <coughs> 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 
I'm sorry, guys. Mm. And wigs are investment. Okay. Mm. I did not know about wigs. I've actually just learned from this responses that wigs are actually an investment. I didn't even know wigs were that expensive. I have a friend who had a wig that's worth 50k. And when she told me, I thought she was joking. And I then I actually realized that wig was worth 50k. Yeah. So wigs are actually an investment. I'm just learning this and I'm learning it very recently. You also say you have skincare products worth uh, 40k plus and they're worth it. I don't know what skincare products these are. You can also share with us to get context for people who'd like to invest in that um, in skincare as well. And also you have, you bought a mattress worth 46 K because you say sleep is sleep is important. Yes. Sleep is very important. Sleep is extremely important. I also bought my bed and mattress. It came as a whole set, a divan bed, a mattress and all that. And the headboard. <coughs> Usually the price goes for around 42 to 46 K for the set. But again, I tell you, I remain God's favorite. I do not know how lucky girl syndrome. I got the bed when Taskies was going into closure and they were just like throwing away stuff. So at the time I got the entire set for 25,000 Kenyan shillings. So yeah, I understand how it's important it is to invest in things like a bed, a couch, and basically things within the home that make your home a really cozy place to be. I, I, w I would not even put a cap on how much money I can use in things that make my home a homely place to be. So uh, congratulations on your skincare, on your wigs, on your mattress. Ish, you're doing the most, yeah? Um, all the best with everything else that you will invest in uh, later. And the uh, last person told me very expensive human hair wig for ugly lock stage. So <laughs> it just wasn't me wore it once. Lol. So you bought an expensive as human hair wig that locks people who've had locks, you know, that stage where you just look like a thug. <laughs> I guess for that stage is when you bought a wig, but yeah, you just cannot wear a wig. So you only wore it once. And now you just have it there. But as the previous response has said, wigs are actually an investment. So I think you can actually keep it or sell it at still a very good price. I do not know. But yeah, I mean, congratulations. <laughs> How are your locks now? I hope they're all grown and look really, really good. But you'll be fine. You'll be fine. At least now you know. Next time you keep, you start your locks afresh. You just deal with the thuggery that comes with that stage. <laughs> anyway, that was all the responses that I got. And I'm pretty grateful for people who are always willing to share. It's such a beautiful time to just see and share all those experiences and information that we get from each other. We bounce off each other and I actually get testimonials where people are just like, this episode did it for me. This episode... I learned so much from this story. I learned so much from this story. So for people who are contributing constantly, thank you. Thank you so much. You have no idea how much your experiences change lives and how much your experiences just give insight even to other people, including myself. Like today, there's a couple of things that I have on my wish list that I'd like to buy, but I had never had insight from anyone else and I have them right here. So thank you very much. Now we go to... <coughs> Allow me to take water, blow my nose, and cough. <laughs> I'll be back. And we are back. And this is the story of how I bought my first car. Let me tell you, I was one of those people. I will confess right now. I was, back then, I was those people who, uh, you're going to park a car in front of a rental house? Duh. <laughs> like, Why? So yes, I was those people, but then I, I changed my mind during the, do you remember the El Nino reigns of, was it 2018? I think it was 2018. It would rain in this Nairobi ridiculously and taking a bus to work was the worst experience ever. So at the time is when I started considering, 
okay, maybe I understand how in these bigger towns like Nairobi, buying a car before like buying a piece of land makes more sense. It's more feasible than buying a piece of land. In smaller towns, pieces of land could actually be cheaper than a car by far. So maybe that's the mentality I grew up with. But then once I moved to the city and started experiencing the city for what it is, I was just like, okay, maybe, maybe it's not such a bad idea to have a car and then figure out your rental situation. Yeah. So uh, what informed me to buy a car? Uh, First things first, I had a very strong desire to just own a car. I think from around 2019, 2020, I don't know what came over me. I've always just thought, okay, maybe I need a car. Maybe I want a car. But in 2019, that urge became very strong. And I remember talking to a couple of people and my friends were just like, I don't think you need a car. There's a friend of mine who even keeps saying, girls don't even need cars. They don't know how to maintain cars. You're just going to use them for errands. Um, It's going to cost you money to maintain it, yet you're not going to use it for so many things. So it's at that point that I was just like, let me get a car. And if it does not serve me, then I can sell it. Let me not just bank off what people are saying for me to get or not get a car. So at the time I was just, it, it was just mostly conversations. And um, also at the time I lived very close to the CBD, let's say the CBD in Nairobi town. So I could actually, <coughs> sorry, I could actually walk to my place of work. I could actually walk to the CBD if I wanted to. Uh, my cab fare was always not more than 300 to anywhere, whether I needed to go to the mall, I needed to go to work, I needed to go to the CBD. I lived very, very close to town. So at the time, I didn't think, my head wasn't thinking, what would I need a car for? Like, it's very convenient to live where I live. So what happened next? I moved to a new place that's further away from town, way, way further. And this was because the place I lived in earlier, the place that was close to everything, as much as I lived there, I only lived there because I was supposed to host someone and the rent there was ridiculous. So I was just like, I need, once that person canceled on moving in with me, I was just like, "Mm mm-mm. Let me move to a way, way cheaper house. It doesn't matter how far it'll go. Let me move to a way cheaper house. I was also tired of living in the concrete jungle, the traffic, the just the Nairobi lifestyle. I like waking up to a serene environment. So I was just like, I'm going to go further away. Um, Depending on what I am earning, this amount of rent should be really, really fair. So I got a way, way cheaper house, like half the amount of money I was paying for the first house closer to the CBD. And then I started living here. So while living in my new place, I took the bus thrice. That was enough to convince me to buy a car. So for people who don't live in Kenya, we our buses, we call them matatus. And we have what we call a matatu culture, where our buses are basically like a work of art. So there's graffiti, there's lights inside the car has loud music and speakers and screens, sometimes even like smaller mini screens on, on top of the roof or behind the chairs. And it's usually like a party bus. And that's a thing in Nairobi. So it's like a party bus. So that's the first bus I ever, um, I ever took And it was before I even moved here and I could have sworn. I think the people I was with in the bus, probably there were teenagers. I could have sworn people were having sex in the back seat. It was horrible. It was yuck. So I I remember swearing to myself. I was like, I would never, never, ever live here. And then I moved here. (laughs) Uh, So once I moved here, I took the bus again twice. And I took three different buses at all the times I took the bus. And the three times I took that bus, there was always loud music. And I hate noise. I cannot deal with noise. Higher decibels just don't work for me. Music is beautiful until it's loud. Then it's not beautiful anymore. Kids are lovely until they get loud. I'm just like, no. So for me, anything with higher decibels, mm -mm, I'm out. So there's always loud music. And every time I just took... The buses, I was just like, "Mm, I don't want this life. I don't want this life. 
And the other thing, also I was looking at my, now my cab fare, coming from a place where I'd basically access everywhere for 300 shillings or less, I now live in a place where to just access the first thing, like say a mall, I'm looking at say 700 shillings. Um, to access the airport, I'm looking at 1000 shillings plus. So this is like doubled, tripled cab fare. And um, although it didn't concern me very much in the beginning because I never leave the house and uh, there was also something to go to the office during COVID, our company had organized for our Uber. So we'd just Uber to wherever all the time. So it wasn't in our budget. I'm so grateful for them. But then when normalcy started to return, I was just like, am I ready? Am I ready to go back to that matatu life? Am I? So those are some of the things that just kept pushing me towards buying a car. And let me tell you, after taking that matatu the third time, I was like, I'm never coming. I will. Mm -mm. I am not taking a matatu again. I have seen enough. It's enough. It's enough. <laughs> so uh, the process was I started saving seriously towards the car in 2021. <coughs> <coughs> so in 2021 is when I was serious. Uh, right, I think around February. Yeah. Right, I think around February, I was like, I'm going to buy a car next year for my birthday. So I started saving up and I was sure in 2023, no, in 2021, November, when is my birthday, I will buy a car then. So I was sure uh, by November of the next year, I will have saved up at least 500, 600K, then I can look for cars within that budget. So then I started saving intentionally towards buying a car. Um, what happened during that time, I would window shop a lot on Facebook and Gigi. Gigi is an e-commerce platform in Kenya where anyone can just list anything. It's like, um, what's that site in America called? Craigslist. Yeah, it's like Craigslist. So everyone just lists whatever, whether you have a car, you have a house, people just list there. And so I started shopping on Gigi and on Facebook. That's the biggest market for cars mostly in Kenya. So I would shop, I would shop. I was like, nah. Um, I also researched a lot because right now, you can tell how close you're getting to your car, but you can't tell at the time when it's happening. In hindsight is when you're like, oh, this is happening. This was happening because this is how close I was getting to buying the car. So then I started researching, heavy research. I would read, I would watch YouTube videos, TikTok videos, anything on social media. I would like, I would take up everything. Let me tell you, by the time I was done with my research, so I had narrowed down to a Toyota Allion or Axio. I really liked salon cars and a Honda. So I was sure I was going to take a Honda Fit. So now I know I'm going to take a Honda Fit. I read everything. My YouTube was just Honda Fit, Honda Fit, Honda Fit, Honda Fit, Honda Fit, Honda Fit. I even researched like Honda Fit 2012 compared to Honda Fit 2014. Like you even searched the, the year of manufacture because apparently there's cars that differ. It could be the same car, but years of manufacture, you could find that there's some improvement in a particular year, or you could find that a particular year also actually had recalled cars. So I did all that work. And by the end of the day, I'd actually settled for a 2010-2011 because those seemed to be the best years from my research. Uh, <laughs> this was so... Let me tell you how much research I had done. I had even watched the documentary of... Um, what's his name? Honda himself, the founder of Honda. His name is... Uh, I think I wrote it somewhere. Siotro. Siotro, I think that's what they call him. Siotro Honda. That's his name. He was born in 1906. I literally watched the entire documentary. I was obsessed and I couldn't tell why because I don't even have the money that's supposed to buy that car. But by this time, I'm already set. This is towards the end of 2021. So I even my mind hasn't registered that I'm going to buy a car, but I'm just doing everything. The other thing I did is I would ask people at random whether they, um, how they bought their car or how they're experiencing their car. If I just had someone had a car, I'd just be like, oh, how's your car? Da, da, da. So people would just give me information. No one would ever think 
that I was actually asking this information so that I can buy a car. And when I wanted to buy a car, my logic was, my, this is my logic for everything in life. And that's why I think I'm a minimalist and I live a very good life as a minimalist. It's always function over fashion. Always functionality first. So I needed a car that could drive, I could drive home to see my parents. I needed a car that could take me from point A to point B when I needed to run errands. If I had any businesses, it could just literally offer me the convenience to carry things from place to place, especially when it's events. So for me, that was all. It didn't matter whether the car was, looked good on the outside. It didn't matter whether the car looked, yeah, all of that for me, I was, I, I didn't care. My logic was function, function over fashion, function. How's the function? And then, um, the other thing I have a budget. Um, and as I've mentioned before, I don't know how to bargain. So me, I just have a budget and that budget, I know what I'm going to look for has to fit this budget. I am not going to negotiate because I really struggle with negotiation. So that's why I look for ready-made things that are already in my budget. And let me tell you, I'm freaking patient. I could wait six months. I could wait a whole year to get what I want within my budget. I have no hurry. There is no hurry in Africa. <laughs> so for me, I had a budget and my budget, my budget was 500K. And I was like, whatever's going to happen, I'm going to find a car. That's going to serve the function that I wanted to serve in my 500k budget. So that was also my logic. And the other thing that I, this is going to sound far-fetched, but it's very, very personal. I don't know about other people. For me, the initial purpose of why that brand of car was created. So that is something that I do with other things. So you'll find me buying a lot of African-owned products or Kenyan-owned products because I believe in like, what is it called? The intention behind it. It's to support the black communities, to support Kenyan artists, just to support. So when Honda was creating the Honda car, he started with bikes actually, because we all know the Honda bike. So when Honda was creating the car, his aim was to get a budget friendly car that was just as powerful as any other car, like was hardy, was good. The engine was working well. And there was something about the engines that he kind of tweaked that was different from other cars. And he tried it over and over and over again. I will actually link the uh, CO3 Honda's documentary in the, in, the, in the description so that you can also go and watch it. Um, for him, it was budget friendly and uh, just as good a car as any other, yet fuel efficient. So he got me on fuel efficient, budget friendly, and still like quality. So I was like, this person was not trying to create um, a fashionable brand. He wasn't trying to create an influencer brand. He was just trying to create something very practical that can that still maintains the quality of all these other cars while still being fuel efficient and budget friendly and i thought that was very humanly of him and that's why i became obsessed with honda so even right now people ask me if you ever upgrade what are you going to i'm going to honda civic honda crv honda insight i don't know i'm gonna stick with honda <laughs> <laughs> just from that. So I am also very connected to the stories behind particular brands. And that's very personal for me. I don't know if it is for any other person, but that is one of my logic, right? Um, so now buying the car in 2022, January. Now this is me starting to look for a car. Do I have the money? Did you give me at this point? I've saved right around 250k. So this is January of 2022. So I've saved 250K in January of 2022. I asked a friend of mine, um, can you take me to car bazaars? I just see. So then he tells me Umoja is known for, there's a place in Nairobi called Umoja. It's known for this. It's known for very many car bazaars. And apparently they're the cheapest and the biggest bazaars. So one afternoon we went, we looked around I wasn't happy at all. I didn't feel like the experience was worth it. I was just like, ah, let's go back home. 
ah, I don't want, I, I don't want to be here. So one of the um, guys who took my number, one of the agents, kept on sending me cars. Kept, kept on sending me cars. I was just like, I don't like this one. I don't like this one. I don't know. I'm not feeling it. So over time, he just kept sending. He just kept sending. I was just like, I oh, know I'm not coming to view. I'm not coming to view. I don't like this one. I don't like it. So over time, uh, on in February. 2022 20, still so this is just like a week i yeah it must have been a week or two after yeah it wasn't so long but i remember it was february and um i see a honda fit on gg so i had been given some uh, some tips if you can find the actual owner of the car selling the car you'd be very very lucky because now you have someone to hold accountable in case of anything. And two, because the the owner can't put a huge markup for themselves. So usually if you're, if you're getting it from a bazaar or from an agent, there's the markup that's put for the owner plus the markup for the agent. So if you're going to buy um, a car at 400K, if you're going to get it from a bazaar, you're probably going to get it at 600K so that the owner is paid some money and the agent also makes some money. So uh, my friend actually told me, if you ever, 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 ever get the actual owner of the car selling it, you'll be very, very lucky. So then on a random day, um, I think it was on a Monday, if I'm not wrong, on a random day, I am looking through Gigi. I see this Honda Fit. I, he's only put one photo. Um, and then I don't know. Let me tell you <laughs> my instincts, my instincts, my gut. My heart told me this is your car. This is your car. This one is the one we are going to buy. <laughs> <laughs> do I have the money? Did you give me? I don't have the money. I don't know. I, I don't know anything else about the car. So then I text the guy off of the GG app. I text him directly. I'm like, can I see photos, other photos of the car? And I'd like to come and view it tomorrow if you'll be available. Oh, he tells me, oh yeah, come on over at 10 a.m. Please come on over at 10 because at 11 I need to go somewhere. Come on over. And here are more photos of the car. So then he sends me more photos of the car and he's like, he's very genuine. He's just like, um, the color of the car is not its original gray because I think they were repainting at some point and then it got oxidized, da, 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 da. but they're not going to repaint it because then the person buying the car will, will have a few doubts about whether it's had an accident or not. Right. So he was very upfront with all the information and when I looked on Gigi, he only had one listing. So I was sure this is not someone who's an agent. It's someone who's selling the car personally. So um, I booked a meeting for 10 the next day. I called my friend again, who's been taking me through all this. <laughs> oh my goodness. I owe him so much. I call him again. I'm like, so tomorrow on Waiyaki Way, we are going to see a car. He's like, okay, cool. I tell him, please be there at 10 so you can show me what to look for in the car. I went to, um, it was at Uthiru. So I went to Uthiru, um, looked at the car. My friend came over. He also saw some of the things. <clears throat> By the time I was done, we were just looking at the things. We didn't even call a mech to look at whatever it is. We didn't even call a mech. So I'm just, I, I, I don't know. All these things are happening, but at the end of the day, I just know I'm going to take this car. I don't know with what money, but I'm going to take this car. So then he signs, we sign an agreement. We take photos of our IDs, da, 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 the entire uh, shebang. And then I pay a deposit of 30,000. This was probably on a Tuesday. I pay a deposit of 30,000. And he asks me, so when can I bring you the car for the full amount of money? And let me tell you, I tell this guy, bring the car on Friday. Do I have money that I'm supposed to? So I have 250K. I have paid 30k. I still need 190,000 to like fill up this money cuz now we bargained from 450 his listing was 450 and now I had bargained to 440. I've done very well for myself by the way because I don't even usually bargain. So um so from 450 to 440 so now I need 190 shillings because the only money I had was 250,000. 
So I go back home. The first thing I think I'm going to get a loan from my circle and I'm going to see if my bank can give me a loan. Um, let me tell you, I don't believe in loans. And I told myself a while back that I will buy everything in cash. I will, I will always buy everything in cash. I will not take a loan out to buy anything. And so I don't have a loan history with the bank. <laughs> <laughs> uh, when I called my circle, my circle was just like, you missed your payment last month and we need you to have contributed consistently for the past three months for us to give you a loan. So now my circle is out. My bank is out. I call my other bank. They're like, oh, so you only have 60K and you need to sign this and these papers, take them to your employer. Da, 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 da. I was just like, you literally want me to go through the hassle of all of this for 60k. 60k. I was like, no, bye. Bye, boss, bye. So um I don't have the money now. It's headed to Friday. Friday comes. This guy texts me and says he's still in Nakuru, but he can bring the car over on Sunday. I'm like, oh, he says he can bring the car over on Saturday. I'm like, uh, actually, no, just bring it on Sunday. Because on Saturday, I'm also held up. So he's like, oh, okay, cool. Even that gives me more time. So um, on Sunday, the car is supposed to come. This is Friday. I do not have the 190K that I'm supposed to fill up. So then I start asking people that I know, do you have 100K? Do you have 100K? People don't have 100K just lying around. And even if they did, it's too much money to trust someone with as a loan, right? So... Um, the whole of Friday has passed Saturday. The friend who's been taking me around all these rounds, he's calling me. He's like, I've tried even asking from my friends, my dad, nothing is coming through you. So I don't know what you'll do on your end. So then I sit down and I'm just like, okay, since someone can't give me a hundred K, I guess it's easy for someone to trust me with 20 K, right? So then I started contacting like random people. Um, of course, I know them, but I don't know them very well. Some of them I even just met on Facebook and never met in person. So I contacted them and I was just like, do you have 20K? I'm going to pay it back by March 3rd. So yeah, if you have it. And let me tell you, for each of these people who had the money that I asked, so 20, 10, 30, 20, 10, 30, for all of these people who had the amount of money that I had, didn't even ask questions they were just like, what account should I send it to? And I send bank details and I receive a, and I receive an alert. Send bank details, I receive an alert. I, I, I do not believe that shit. And the last amount of money I got was from one person very close to my heart. And she called me and she's like, so yo, I'm out of a job. And me and my child, eh, we don't know. We don't know. But eh, baby daddy will take care, right? Um, okay, not baby daddy, but the fiance. Fiance will take care. So I'm going to give you this 100K. Um, I trust you to pay it back. I don't need it very, I don't need it very soon. So you take your time, but I feel like I, like if this money can help you get your car, you just take it. So literally this girl cleared out her bank account and gave me 100K. Like, psh, and that's all the money she had. Nothing. She's lost her job. She has a child. And she was just like, yo, babe, me, I know you've come through for me before. So you just take, I know you'll pay it back. And believe it or not, on Sunday morning, I woke up with the full amount of 410,000 Kenyan shillings in my bank account. And I went and met this guy. Um, so he brought it to my friend's house, the friend who has been helping me with all these rounds. So he, I also just wanted him there for... I don't know me. I don't know anything. I've never bought a car. Him, he's bought a car, so he knows these things. So I asked that the car be brought to his house. So I went to the my friend's house. I paid the entire 410. That was the balance that was remaining. <coughs> Sorry. It was the balance that was remaining. And yo, the car was left in my hands. I was handed the car keys. All this sounded unreal. It was all so... It was, it was crazy. It was just like, I, I, I don't know what, I don't know what this is. So yeah, that's how I bought my car. So then I just took the keys and drove. 
I was a bit scared because I haven't driven um, for a while. I've always like just hired cars for one drive, out, drives outside town. So I've never driven within the Nairobi city. So I just drove home. I got home. The 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 guard, the gate guard is looking at me weird. He's just like, okay, you've bought a car. Ma. Like, anyway, he thought maybe I've borrowed. Um, so I get in, I park the car. I go and sit in my house. I am utterly shocked. I, I don't know what, I don't know what to do. This was the 13th of February. So on the 14th of February was, uh, what is it called? Valentine's Day. So that's how I remember the anniversary of my car. It was literally a gift to myself for my Valentine's. But then this was literally a story for it, I, I wouldn't advise anyone to do anything the way I do it because, first of all, I think I have a ridiculous amount of access to luck, like just good luck. I, I, I don't know. I, I As I've said, I'm, I'm probably God's favorite. And number two, I don't know if I... I don't know. Me, I do things all the time, but they seem to work out for me. But I think you need a plan. People need a plan because... This car was supposed to be bought in November 2022 and it was bought in February 2022. That means it was nine months premature. So, yeah, <laughs> plans don't work like that. So, for me, I feel extremely, extremely lucky. Um, I did pay, I did pay back the, because there was money I was expecting in March. So, the people I had promised to pay back, all the people I borrowed small, small monies from, I paid them back exactly on the day I told them, um, which was, I think, 3rd March. I paid all of them back. And also, if you lend me money, I'll pay it back with a little something because I consider the coming through for me. I also consider probably you had a transaction fee that cost you. So, yeah, I just add a small, maybe a thousand bob or a 500 bob on top just to say thank you. So I paid it all back. For the person who gave me the entire 100k, because I didn't want to pay them back in bits, I actually just put the money together over three, was it three or four months? And then I paid it back to them in full. But the car I paid in cash. So the car belonged to me by the time I had taken the keys. But the problem is at the time we were also having elections in the next few months. And I think there was a transfer for functions from was it Kenya Police to NTSA, something of the sort. So the portal was down throughout, so we could not transfer the logbook. So by the time the portal was working, it was around October, November. So that's when the logbook was transferred to me. And then I had set my pickup point as Eldoret, because I, I, I just like Eldoret. So I set my pickup point at Eldoret, and I went to Eldoret to pick it up just last month, or is it last week? Yeah. So that's when I got time to go pick it up. But the logbook was fine. It, the transfer was easy. We paid for the transfer. Um, and then we, yeah, it was done in a month. And then they send you a, a text. They tell you, oh, your logbook is ready. Come for it. So I did go for the logbook. Other things that I, <sighs> I had thought about and I had budgeted for but hadn't considered, there was uh, one thing, insurance. I had not factored it in, but the person who sold me the car, um, their insurance had not expired. So their insurance was still valid for a month until the next. So I had a month covered in insurance without me having to pay. And then since I was flat broke, I took up um, third party instead of uh, comprehensive for like a year to cover me while I figure out. <laughs> where to get money and then also now i've bought money now i've bought this car with all the money i had including loans so now i have no money on i have nothing on me nothing on me so then my friend comes to visit i think the weekend the same weekend as <coughs> oh guys i'm dying so then my friend comes to vis visit the same weekend or maybe two weeks later i don't know and she's like hey i know you you do get broke but you've never been like no food broke. What, Kwani, what have you bought? And I was like, eh, I bought a car. And she was also just utterly shocked. She was just like, what, what do you mean? She literally was excited for me. She literally took up the excitement 
for me because I was too shocked to be excited. <laughs> so she was so happy and she was just like, so where is the car? And I'm like, it's in the parking. I do ride it along the neighborhood, but I don't go far with it because I don't have the money for servicing it. So I'm just waiting a little to get some money so I can go service it so I can use it around town. And she was just like, tomorrow we leave, we are going to service that car. So she actually funded, sponsored my first service. <laughs> yes i paid her back later she she had no she was just like you we are going to service this car we start using it you will pay me back when you'll pay me back so for servicing she's the one who sponsored for um insurance i had at least one month until i bought the comprehend the sorry the third party one and we were good so um the lessons that i learned when buying my car were I realized I actually have a lot of money. That was something I did not know. I just wasn't keen to account for it because in my head, I was just like, if I had all my debt paid by May and I bought a car in February, it means that in this short period, I literally had more than 500,000. But in my head, I had never thought to like ever have 500k with me at any one point so just having like 500k buying something that's worth that amount of money and i was just like okay so yes i do have this money i just have to be intentional about accounting for each and every penny so that's when i started being a bit more um intentional with my money because I was those people who were just like I don't think I'll ever be rich because I think rich people have to what is it called rich people tend to be ruthless okay not rich but for you to amass a great amount of wealth I think like there's some sort of ethics you will have to abandon at some point and I used to tell myself I don't think I can be those people but after buying my first car I was just like okay, I think I can actually be rich. I, well, I, 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 maybe I might not get to the point of being extremely wealthy and amassing crazy amount of wealth, but rich, it's quite achievable. It's quite achievable. So for me, from that point, rich became something that is quite achievable. So money mentality really, really changed for me. Something else Ivy Africa kept saying, but I never understood until I bought my car. Do not save blindly. Save towards a specific intention. I never understood until I bought my first car. And I was just like, Yes, this is what she meant. When you go to bed at night thinking about the car, you wake up thinking about the car, everything you do is is just directed towards the car. So it was easier to save money. It was easier for me to um deny myself some things and just save towards that. And it's way easier when you have um when you have a goal you're working towards than just saving for a I don't know, a rainy day, an emergency. So I then realized it's very good to be intentional about what you're saving towards. So if it's a car, save towards that car and have a target. Um, Like the same way I knew by November, I should have 500K. But then I realized I could have had 500K as early as much. So it was me who was setting very low targets for myself, yet I could achieve way more just with a little more confidence. Um some uh sorry i also learned that um i don't know whether to call it investing in a trusted brand because it's not a brand per se um this is in the sense that the people i borrowed money from were not exactly close friends they were just there are some even i met on facebook and i've never met them in person but the minute i sent them a text they were just like what account should i send the money to they didn't ask questions and I was just like, whoa. So these people just trust my morals and values. That's all. Like, that's like, you know, Olive can be anything, but she can be a con woman. And that was just easy for them to just like send me money. As much as, <clears throat> as much as 20, 30K is probably money that's easy to lose. At the end of the day, I, I, I don't know. I mean, Still, they just like trusted me blindly. 
literally there are people I have never met to date who lent me money. So I'm just, and I paid it back. So I think it was, it taught me a very huge lesson. I was very proud of myself to have built that sort of character and brand for myself that I can be identified as a trustworthy person. And it came to play in this situation where I was actually in need. So I loved it, loved it, loved it. So I don't know whether to say trusted brand or to just say build character that is trustworthy. Just be a good person. Genuinely, I always have good intentions. I'm always a happy person. And I I honestly choose to do good by people all the time. <coughs> hey, where? <coughs> um, another lesson is that your heart will guide you. This I've used my whole life. I used to doubt my instinct sometimes and I'd do the quite opposite of what it would tell me to do. But over time and throughout the process of buying that car, I realized that, yes, um, everything that I, my heart pointed out and said that, that is it, that is not it. When I trusted that instinct, I was fine. I was fine. So I think your gut will always lead you to the right place. But then again, I said, probably I am God's favorite. Um, someone else, sorry, I am so used to reading responses. But anyway, um, these are things that I would just attribute to my lucky girl syndrome. I literally believe I am extremely lucky. I do not know how things freaking work out for me. And that is why I tell people I will share my story, but I do not advise you to do things the way I've done them because mine actually makes no sense. It's literally just patched up work and then a lot of luck and then some crazy ass shit that just falls into place later. So I will share my story just so you know my story, but I wouldn't advise that you do things like me because yo, it, I am out here just, I don't know, shooting in the dark all the time, <laughs> but somehow I managed to hit. Anyway, uh, my lucky girl syndrome, I can just say the fact that I didn't have insurance money and then this person um, basically had insurance for me for the next month. And then something that I learned quite, quite recently, I didn't even know this when I was consulting a friend who also wants to buy a car. And she, she was like, what, what are you talking about? Apparently cars don't come with those things in the trunk, the, the, the hazard reflectors, the jack, the, spanner is it the spanner the whatever that is these things you use to change your tires um all those things a spare tire and i have a normal uh, what is it called i have a normal size spare tire like my tire my spare tire is not a donut and it came with the car that was sold to me so when i learned that apparently those things don't come with the car I was I was actually surprised. Does it not come with a car? Does anyone know that? Let me know. If it does, then I guess I'm not as lucky. I'm just one of those people. <laughs> but yes, that I learned very recently. And of course, also the service money where my friend just came through because she was not also in a very good place at the time. But she was just like, I have this money that I had set aside and I know you will pay it back. So we are going to service this money because we need to use this car around. <laughs> so yeah, that's some of my lucky girl shit. Um, so just a breakdown. I ended up buying a Honda Fit. I, I love it. The experience has been good. I have had a few things to make here and there. I repainted it. I will give you a tip. The lowest quote I was given for repainting that car in Nairobi was 32k. I actually repainted it in Kisumu for 15k. So yeah, that's information you can use. And in Eldoret, it was quoted at 13k. So yeah, just so you know. <laughs> um, also something else I worked on, I found a leaking, what was it called? The gearbox was leaking. Yes, the gearbox was leaking. So that was also fixed for 6,000. But these are things I found out as time went. It was uh, fixed for, it was fixed for 6,000. Um, anything else significant? 
Oh yeah, just the beginning, not the beginning of this year, probably two months ago from now, there was, um, I woke up, started my car, it wouldn't start. So then the starter had to be changed because it wasn't the battery. So that also chipped in a good one, um, right about, was it 16K? I think, yeah, 16K. Yeah, there was the starter and then I had to buy a few other things. I don't remember. But anyway, um, that was, those are some of the things I've been changing in the car. But so far, nothing else that's quite out of the ordinary. I think the car was not oversold. Literally, from all the research that I did, it's a beautiful car. Um, it picks up speed really, really well. Um, <clears throat> fuel efficiency. I'm living in this town like I'm living for free. Way. Uh, fuel efficiency is really, really good. I've done long trips with it. I've gone to Eldoret, Kisumu, back to Eldoret, back to Nairobi. Um, it served me very, very well. It's been now a year and I really, really like it. So my Kaiser Honda Fit was bought at 440,000. Um, the listing went for 450. I got it on Gigi, which is an e-commerce site for where people just list products that they have. Again, that I think is a lucky girl syndrome because Gigi has the most number of con people ever. So yeah again i'm just i'm honestly grateful for my experience in buying my car but that that is basically the story of how i bought my first car i hope this was an interesting story i'm sorry for all the coughing i will have recovered by next week but um until next week right i love you Thank you for always making this possible. I am because you are. I will remind you there are partnership opportunities on this podcast. If you're watching on YouTube, you can have product placement and streaming on every other site. You can have uh, mentions on this podcast. You can sponsor an episode or a season and you can also run an advertisement on this podcast. I'll be more than happy to partner with you. Check out my socials for the next prompt, which I am sure right now it will be about cons that we've experienced. And um, also check out the comments under the prompts that I put, because that's where the tea is at. People just talk about their experiences there. But until next time, thank you again for coming to yet another episode of the In All Honesty podcast. My fabulous name remains Oliver Rao. And bye. Mm -hmm.